Hello students, welcome to the daily news analysis. So today we'll be understanding the important news articles of 19th February 2022. I'm your educator Prithvira Singh. Let us begin with the first slide. So guys, in the Hindu, in the newspaper, you can see the uh, news with regard to Ukraine crisis. Guys, few days back there was a news that Russia is withdrawing its troops from Ukraine. But again, it's being uh, known that uh, at the double standards of being exposed to the world and it is clear that Russia is no, not withdrawing actually it was a false propaganda in fact it is still there surrounding Ukraine there are more than lakhs of soldiers you know surrounding Ukraine at Belarus at Crimea and even at a region you know which is uh, called as Donbass region right so this region is called as Donbass region Donbass and you know that Donbass region has you know people who support Russia right so they may be called as the uh, allies of Russia or supporters of Russia in this sense they are the rebels to uh, the queue right so uh, Russia has is in fact you know uh, appreciated the India's India's stand with regard to uh, uh, Ukraine in the United Nations Security Council we know guys that India is seeking for a peaceful solution and there are thousands of Indian students you know especially in the medical colleges in ukraine so india want to safeguard their interest right so therefore it becomes uh, important now uh, uh, so ukraine has accused russia of ceasefire violations in the regions of donetsk and luhansk now these are the regions which are located near donbas region right which is russia backed uh, rebels right russia backed rebels in donbas right and in this way it's being alleged that Russia is, you know, supplying heavy weapons. Heavy weapons in Donbas against Ukraine, right? So in this way, they plan to intrude Ukraine from uh, three sides, from North Belarus, South Crimea, and East Donbas, right? So in this sense, because in the Minsk agreements, guys, in our previous lectures, we have studied Minsk agreements came into being in the year 2014 and they were to you know uh, to to secure an end to this rebel crisis right and uh, there it was a tripartite agreement we'll understand it although we did had a, a session on uh, russia ukraine crisis a uh, few days back you can just uh, scroll on the news uh, daily news analysis of some days before so Minsk agreements clearly says that the heavy weapons are prohibited, right? So the use of heavy weapons by Russia is a violation of Minsk agreement, right? I hope it is clear. Now, guys, this is the map which also I used while explaining Ukraine-Russia um, crisis. See, guys, this is how uh, Russia is actually surrounding uh, Ukraine from Belarus, which is an ally, which is an ally to Russia. And similarly, you have uh, Donbas region, right? So this is your Donbas region, Donbas, where Russia has posted its troops. Similarly, Crimea, which was annexed in the year 2014. Again, here from here also, Russia is, you know, uh, uh, ha Russia has amassed its troops, right? So it has surrounded Kyiv from three sides, right? So there are, uh, you know, uh, very heavy possibility that some intrusion may take place because uh, you it has been alleged that America wants to expand its NATO, wants to expand NATO towards east, right at the front of Russia and Russia do not want Ukraine in going in the hands of uh, America by it becoming member of NATO. So, so there are Minsk, Minsk agreements in the Normandy format talks, you know, which is being uh, actually being spearheaded by the France, French president Emmanuel Macron and uh, it is a trilateral it was a trilateral contract group under the minsk agreements right where so it is it's trilateral contract group means donbas russia and an international ngo which we'll understand in the coming slide right as you can see guys it was a trilateral contact group tcg between the ukraine russian federation and an international ngo called as organization for security and cooperation in Europe organization for security and cooperation in Europe it is an international NGO and it works for you know nuclear disarmament it checks any uh, use of heavy weapons and it checks any abuse of the human rights violations 
right i hope it is clear so so the minsk agreements were uh, you know signed in the year 2014 and it sought to end war in the donbas region you guys now at this stage you know that donbas is a region which has russia backed rebels right so people who support russia and they are you know entering into a rebellion against the kyiv government of ukraine right and to end the civil war trilateral contact group was was formed between ukraine which had ukraine russian federation and osce as its members right with mediation by the leaders from france and germany in the so called normandy format talks correct so i hope it is clear now we talked about prisoner exchanges guys delivery of humanitarian aid and very important withdrawal of heavy weapons guys it was being clearly mentioned under minsk accord that you know heavy weapon cannot be used now if russia supplies heavy weapons to donbas region to the rebels fighting against the kyiv government it is a clear violation of minsk 1 2014 although guys 2014 minsk 1 failed uh uh right and then minsk 2 2015 came into existence it also failed but at least the normandy format parties agreed that it remains the basis for any future resolution right so any future resolution would take place only based on minsk accords or minsk agreement right although it failed but it would remain as the basis for any future resolution right so so when russia do, does supply heavy weapons it is a violation of minsk agreement i hope it is clear right so as you can see there are 13 there are 13 points which were being deliberated withdrawal of heavy weapons by both sides uh, osce would be monitoring the activities there would be amnesty for the fighters exchanges of this hostages humanitarian assistance elections in donetsk and luhansk region very important guys and the donbas region you have donetsk and luhansk and the elections would be held there right so <coughs> so this is how it's there now coming to the next news article guys on the screen you can see what is sealed cover jurisprudence now this article talks about sealed cover jurisprudence <coughs> guys as the name suggests sealed cover jurisprudence when the court takes any decision or when the court arrives at any decision right without you know uh, exposing or making the public making public the documents of the government possibly because of the reason that those documents are confidential <coughs> they are being protected under some act like official secrecy act or the government do not want to you know make it public because of the security reasons of the country so based on these uh, although it, there is no mention of the same uh, in the constitution or possibly in some any law but definitely uh, there are some sealed cover documents of the government to secure confidentiality right now when any decision is being arrived by the court uh, against you know uh, the sealed cover uh, documents it is generally in lame in is generally uh, the cliche is sealed cover jurisprudence right now guys you all know the uh, the the case of malayalam news channel media 1 and uh, you know uh, how it's being banned its transmission is being banned right now there has been high very huge scale discontent over the kerala high court's verdict upholding the transmission ban on malayalam news channel media 1 right and they say that uh, uh, the the court or the judges have not has not you know um, hasn't actually uh, disclosed the uh, documents sent by the ministry of home affairs and uh, they were not been shared in the public so that is the reason why there is a discontent correct as i said that there is no such law for them uh, you know for the sealed cover uh, jurisprudence but at least in the the supreme court derives its power to use rule 7 of order you know 18th right of the supreme court rules sorry 13th my bad of the supreme court rules right so there are rules of the court or supreme court rules so rule number 13th of the supreme court right rule 7 7 of order 13th of supreme court uh, you know do talk about the uh, the sealed cover jurisprudence and there is section 123 of indian evidence act right so guys it is important so they may ask you that which jurisdiction or act 
or law applies over the secret jurisprudence so it is indian evidence act of 1872 section 123 i hope it is clear सो so गाइज ऐसा नहीं है कि पहले जो है ये इस तरह के सीक्रेट कवर जुरिस्प्रेडेंस नहीं हुए आपने आपको पता हो गया यू वुड बी नोइंग दैट इन रफाल कंट्रोवर्सी एंड मैनी अदर केसेस द गवर्नमेंट डिंट डिस्क्लोज इट्स डॉक्यूमेंट्स एंड दी जजमेंट वाज अराइव्ड बिकॉज द गवर्नमेंट फील्स दैट द पब्लिकेशन इज नॉट इज इन पब्लिक इंटरेस्ट एंड देर फॉर दे डोंट डिस्कलोज इट राइट एज यू कैन सी द रफाल केस इवन द केसेज ड्यूरिंग द टन ऑफ former justice uh, ranjan gogoi uh, even the nrc which was conducted in assam even the fight between the cbi former directors alok verma and the special director rakesh asthana and many bcj reform cases were also not being opened right also there was a case guys very famous case in the state of kerala p gopal krishnan versus state of kerala 2019 now here the court supreme courts said that disclosure of documents to the accused is constitutionally mandated even if the investigation is ongoing and said documents may lead to breakthrough in the investigations so it has a different stand p gopal krishnan versus state of kerala supreme court said that the disclosure of the documents to the accused is constitutionally mandated that means the government cannot hide the documents or the content in the documents from the accused even if the investigation is ongoing and the and the said documents may lead to break because the said documents may lead to breakthrough in investigation right so so pp gopal krishnan university state of kerala supreme court advocated for you know disclosure of the documents making the documents public right so it was against any secrecy right so p gopal krishnan university state of kerala because it's a recent case of in the year 2019 so therefore it becomes important right so it is again uh, for secret uh, cover jurisprudence so they may ask you where the following cases uh, talks about the secret cover jurisprudence so it is p gopal krishnan versus state of kerala i hope it is clear right in the same way the in the chitambaram case inx media case of 2019 also he was granted bail uh, you know and a bench of supreme court criticized the delhi high court for basing its decisions to deny bail to the former union minister on documents submitted by ed in a sealed cover right because the uh, the high court of delhi denied the bail to uh, former minister uh, p chitambaram because uh, you know uh, the documents which were submitted by the ed were in sealed cover right so this was also the case with regard to the same i hope it's clear <coughs> moving to the next news article guys you can see on the news which deals with environment very important aspect guys generally in the uh, examination especially in the clat exam there are passages if some passages relate to polity some relate to international relations there would always be one passage on environment right so therefore we must be very careful and alert with regard to any environment news coming in right guys recently a uh, lizard uh, you know uh, as you can see on the screen a new gecko was being found or discovered in meghalaya and it's being it's it's to it's because it's bent toward gecko right because it want to appear itself as a snake right Uh, so as to get a natural uh, you know uh, <clears throat> i would say protection so therefore it is a bent toed gecko right so bent toed gecko it appears as a snake right so it's a natural protection for uh, it for it's a lizard basically so right so it is indian army's bent toed gecko right so indian army doesn't mean that indian army has found it it is just a name given to it right a bent toed gecko from a wooden part of the umrai military station in meghalaya its scientific name is crytodactylus excrescitus and ex excrescitus means army right now english name is indian army's bent toed gecko another new bent toed gecko the cryptogatilus siahensis named after mizoram's sihana district where it was found right so in meghalaya a new uh, you know gecko has been found and it is 
called as Indian Army's Band Toad Geeko. Right, so it is from Meghalaya. I hope it is clear. Now, guys, amidst the Ukraine-Russia crisis, America <coughs> has announced that they would be supplying Abrams tanks for Poland. And you know that Poland is a country which supports America. And America has announced that they would be supplying the world's most modern battle tanks to Poland against Russia. If, if Russia tries to intrude into Ukraine, it would be responded and strongly responded by America. And America is selling Abram tanks to Poland, right? So it is M1A2 Abrams tanks, right? It is America's technological improvement of the basic MIA design and the most modern battle tank in the world guys you can see on the screen it has a manually loaded cannon that can fire against enemy personal armored vehicles and even low flying aircrafts right so you can it can even shoot the low flying aircrafts right so guys the situation is tense and uh, uh, it is something because it is because they are at loggerheads. Now we'll see where it will go, right? So stay tuned and uh, press the bell icon to stay updated. Like, share, comment. If anything you want to uh, share with us, if you want to give some feedback to us, do give us, right? So, so moving to the next news article on the screen. Tamil Nadu has said no in the Supreme Court to neutrino observatory projects. Guys, you would be knowing that neutrino observatory project is under process, under progress in, uh, in Tamil Nadu. Guys, <coughs> in order to understand this, we must have a basic idea of neutrino. Now, neutrino is also very similar to electron. And since electron has negative charge, right? So neutrino is almost also chargeless. Almost chargeless, right? And it is one of the most abundant found elements in, uh, you know, uh, matter, in fact, in, uh, in the universe, right? So it would help us in actually uh, understanding the uh, origins of universe. It would help us in nuclear physics and high energy technologies. Guys, uh, in order to build Indian Neutrino Observatory, uh, you know the, the 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 topography is being is being cut and it is a sensitive ecological zone where it is being situated in the Western Ghats. So therefore, many environmental conservatives are actually you know uh, uh, protesting the INO project or Indian Neutrino Observatory project. So they may ask you, right? It is a world-class underground laboratory with a rock cover of approx 1200 meters for non-accelerator based high energy and nuclear research in India, right? So it would help us in high energy nuclear physics research in India, guys. And it is jointly funded by Department of Atomic Energy and Department of Science and Technology. The initial goal of INO is to study neutrinos. The project is proposed to be set up at Potiparam village in Thane district Tamil Nadu at very important Bodhi Hills. Guys, there is a possibility of it being asked in the examination. So it is Bodhi Hills in Tamil Nadu in Western Ghats where INO project is, 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 you know, is under progress. I hope it's clear. <coughs> you can see guys here on the screen. Neutrino is a subatomic particle like an electron and it has a very small mass. It's a very small mass and one of the most abundant particles in the universe. Neutrinos have little interaction with matter and are thus difficult to detect. So it's being said guys that every second, you know, trillions of neutrinos pass over from Earth, pass through Earth, not affected by its magnetic field. Why? Because it is, they are very difficult to detect and has very less mass, right? 
the villagers you know fear that they would lose their pastures as the project kick starts right now uh, even <clears throat> they say that you know uh, as laboratory would be needing more than 1000 meter underground uh, you know bodhi hills was chosen for the project as it is made of shemokite rocks the hardest rocks known the lab at potipuram will be set up by blasting 10 liter tons of of you know rocks using explosives right and it is being assessed that the project would require 3 lakh 50 thousand liters water every day right although the officials say that iduki and mulipariyar dams would not be affected uh, but the environmental uh, converse, conservatives they say that edukuri and pole polear dams may be affected but they say that officials in fact on the other hand are saying that they are far located and therefore there is very less possibility of them being affected right guys neutrinos are a type of particle similar to electron and belong to lepton family lepton family of fundamental particles neutrinos are distinguished by a lack of charge and a mass right so they are almost negligible mass and very less charge right so now guys coming to the editorial section there are two important editorials in the hindu today this article editorial was being edited by the mp member of parliament shashi tharur india needs a refugee and asylum law now guys it's we although indian india have seen many refugees coming here but uh, many are also being sent back to their places for example rohingyas when the government felt that they are posing an administrative challenge they were being sent back to their natives like bangladesh and myanmar right where they were again persecuted right so it is against the international law legal principle of non refoulement right so it is a there is international principle of non refoulement guys non refoulement as i said is a fundamental principle of international law that forbids a country receiving asylum seekers right it forbids a country receiving asylum seekers from returning them to a country in which they would be likely persecuted for example rohingya muslims when they were being ejected from their country myanmar their native country myanmar because the myanmar government believed that they are a threat to the security and because you know that uh, myanmar is a sinhala buddhist nation it's a sorry it's a buddhist nation it's not a secular country and they you know uh, inflicted uh, miseries and persecution to rohingyas my rohingyas to the large scale fled to the nearby countries like bangladesh and india posing administrative problems right indian government you know uh, instead of you know accepting them they actually you know uh, because we don't have an asylum law they were being sent back to their native countries right now there again they were being persecuted so this makes them into the vicious circle of uh, you know harassment and persecution right because we don't have an international principle of non refoulement right so so shashi tharur is saying that we must have a law in india for non refoulement right so it is a principle of international law that forbids a country receiving asylum seekers from returning them to a country in which they would be likely persecuted right based on race religion nationality membership so on and so forth so therefore there is uh, he has raised a bill private member bill why because he is not the member of the council of ministers i hope you are getting my point <coughs> there have been many instances guys uh, earlier also as i said rohing rohingya crisis then chakmas in arunachal pradesh chakmas are also the the tribes which fled bangladesh and they uh, you know came to some northeast states including arunachal pradesh similarly there are afghan students guys recently and this issue has come because of this issue, uh, this case afghan students have been stranded in india by the takeover of their country by taliban right 
and have not had their visas renewed and could find themselves in a similar predicament right so so therefore uh, we should have in fact Shashi Thurur is saying that uh, is recommending like in fact that we should have a national commission for asylum right although there are many asylum uh, you know people who came to India as an asylum seeker like Dalai Lama who fled Tibet post China atrocities Chinese atrocities in Tibet however he is being welcomed and he is staying in India so uh, India is neither a signatory to 1951 UN refugee convention nor does it have a domestic asylum framework so guys we are not a signatory to 1951 UN refugee convention very important right but we have we were known because to accept people from outside as you know that Parsis you know Zoroast who follow Zoroastrian religion were being accepted in India and they were still li living in harmony in the country so so this article actually uh, says that we don't have any uniform law and because of this reason there are some cocktail of laws like the foreigners act of 1946 registration of foreigners act 39 passport act 67 extradition act 1962 citizenship act 1955 for foreigners order 1948 all of which club all of which club all foreign individuals together as aliens right so they the term that these laws use is alien and not asylum uh, seeker right so india has neither subscribed to international conventions right <coughs> like the 1951 convention refugee convention on the topic not set up a domestic legislative framework so this is uh, the all it, 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 talk, it talks about and uh, and even in 1996 guys supreme court said that the state has to protect all human beings in india respective of nationality since since you know citizens as well as the aliens or foreigners do enjoy article 14 right to equality 20 21 right to life and it is not limited just to indian citizens and a very famous nhrc versus state of arunachal pradesh case supreme court stopped the false forcible eviction of chakma refugees who had entered arunachal pradesh in the year 1995 right so as i said that the chakma refugees which entered who entered uh, who fled bangladesh and entered you know north east states especially arunachal pradesh uh, they were uh, when the government was uh, you know uh, there was evicting them uh, supreme court stopped them their forcible eviction under landmark case of nhrc versus state of arunachal pradesh and i expect a question on this right so this is your uh, article about the same and uh, it's an interesting article uh, you must read it right coming to the next article right guys uh, this article talks about the new educational policy and the abc right abc the, or the academic bank of credits now there is a new initiative guys called as academic bank of credits in a higher education idea it's been proposed under new education policy nep right it says that let's say if a student want to uh, earn its credits from iit or im or any some any other good university like nit then he can do so he he can do so by you know taking the credits from those universities and he can store digitally those credits in a academic bank of credits in short called as abc right i hope it is clear right so uh, so in this way it makes the education more student centric and multidisciplinary right so any undergraduate or postgraduate student can create an account in the abc portal and store information of his her completed courses right so there are multiple institutes institutes are connected to the abc portal for example one can be formally enrolled in university a but can choose to do some courses from university b some from university c so on and so on and so forth all of these would count towards the student's degree right in this way a student can access the education from the best universities and institutes across the the country right and also for example let's say a, a student learning bsc physics in mumbai and he want to study nuclear physics and he finds that nuclear physics do not have uh, is not available in uh, you know in a local college in mumbai then definitely he can apply at some institute like isc 
etc and he can you know earn the credits and he can store it in the abc portal right he can even enroll himself into swayam and nptel they are also mooc or the online programs nptel is national program on technology enhanced learning and swayam right so here and in this way the teachers from some of the best institutes can be accessed to the students and education would become more flexible and interdisciplinary right but the condition is that the institute should allow up to 20% super mnr seats for students enrolling through the abc uh, scheme right that means out of 100 only 20 students would be allowed under the abc uh, scheme right so uh, but the problem is guys that the top institutes do not have much uh, there are very limited number of professors right and the applications would come in the range of thousands right and you say that only 20% are them are allowed right so how we would adjust it so definitely the mooc courses like nptel swayam they would come handy but then they also test the students knowledge based on objective questions so there is a problem objective questions or objective examination may not be the real test to assess the intelligence of the student right so therefore there are some challenges associated which has to be resolved by the government <coughs> right and even guys very importantly i i am also a uh, bit of disheartened by the fact that uh, they have also diluted the nac criteria uh, you know uh, the criteria the higher education institute should have obtained an a grade or higher in the latest round of nac right that was the criteria but that filter has also been removed now that means even if you are if even if the institute is not a or a plus right under the nac cycle or nac accreditation then also that can be uh, put into the uh, abc uh, scheme right or the nep scheme right so in this way guys uh, uh, and guys uh, today nac is also working uh, i would say it's a comment <coughs> which is being made in the article that nac assesses the institute based on the literature based on the record keeping right based on the uh, record books right and not the quality of teaching sadly right so therefore uh, it is it is it is measuring the institutes based on the clerical statistics and book keeping and this has you know uh, led many institutes you know able to get the top accreditation under nac possibly they dedicate more time on the clerical things yeah uh, against the teaching quality right so there is that is the reason why there is zoo of universities under uh you know uh, or under a or a plus uh, grade of nac right so that is a matter of concern however that criteria has also been uh, removed now so then there be more uh, things available for the students but however this fact is also being explored right right so guys i hope you enjoyed the session this is all for today uh, wish you all the best and uh, stay tuned press the bell icon to get the updates on regular basis please do like share and comment your feedbacks are very important this is your educator prithviraj singh signing off good day good bye